Hello and welcome to Oversight. I am Charles Emuze. One of the goals of Oversight on Channels Television is to ensure that public funds work for the good of the people. You ask how do we do this? By monitoring the implementation of public projects across the country in collaboration with our partners at Budget. Do you know that in the past 12 years, the federal government of Nigeria has allocated a minimum of 1 trillion naira to constituency projects? Many consider this a waste of resources. Some even see it as an avenue for corruption. Today's episode of the program is for our viewers who do not yet grasp uh, the concept of constituency projects. Zonal intervention projects, popularly known as constituency projects, are public projects nominated by federal lawmakers to extend the dividends of democratic government to their various constituencies to spur development at the grassroots level of the country. There is a need to call a spade a spade. That is what we are saying today. The SGF has not represented the government well. Mr. President, we will be, the councillors and House of Assembly members will be better than us if we go home without taking our constituency projects in tow. It doesn't have to do with any party. Constituency projects are novel things that the House negotiated that got government to approve to enable every constituency have a feeling of government paradox. You know, we have uh, 360 constituencies, and sometimes ministers, the executive arm of government, may put whatever project they have in only about 50 or such constituencies. The remaining one will never be touched. So, there are chances that a constituency may be there for 20 years, no single federal government uh, presence. So what I've done is to allow all members have access to constituency projects so that every constituency in the Federation has a federal government touch. The projects by practice are recommended to the executive through the budgeting process. Constitutionally, the National Assembly has the oversight obligation on government projects. Given the fact that these projects are nominated by lawmakers, they are morally and even more officially responsible to provide their people with updates on every project domiciled in their constituency. This is because community members cannot easily access MDAs as they access their elected representatives. Legislators occupy a better position to monitor and proactively ensure the execution of every project by reaching out to agencies in charge while financing and supervision of constituency projects are the best preserves of the executive arm of government, citizens and civil society organizations also have the right to engage the legislature and executive to request details and implementation status of every project. However, Mr. Speaker, this has generated a lot of controversy. In the past, legislators have moved motions to legitimize constituency projects and allocate more funds to it. This bill seeks to call for an enactment of a law to give legal backing to constituency projects, create constituency development fund, provide processes and procedures for their implementation, and ensure transparency, accountability, and probity, and also ensure that the public is properly educated on how these funds are applied. Mr. Speaker, every year members of the National Assembly are required to identify projects in their various constituencies and recommend the same to the executive during budgeting. We do not have direct control to the implementation of these projects. The award, financing, and supervision of these projects are the exclusive preserve of the appropriate MDAs, and of course, not the National Assembly. However, Mr. Speaker, this has generated a lot of controversy in the public, and of course, within our various constituencies, because the general notion is that these funds 
are relayed directly to members of the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, I have had an experience with one of my constituents who approached me some time ago and requested that I provide part of these funds to him once it is released to, to, to me. Mr. Speaker, Nigerians are yet to, make to, be on, uh, to understand that constituency development funds are not given to members of National Assembly. Since these funds are made available every year, it becomes important, Mr. Speaker, that we give legal backing to these appropriations for their, and their implementations for even development of our various constituencies. Mr. Speaker, it is important to also stress that majority of Nigerians reside in the rural areas. If this bill is passed, we will have 2.5% of our total annual budget set aside for the purpose of developing the rural areas. I therefore urge honorable members to support this motion this motion that proposes to set aside 2.5% of our total annual budget for the purpose of developing our rural areas. I so submit, Mr. Speaker. One of the unique features of our democratic journey so far is the concept of constituency projects. Projects may include the acquisition of vehicle machineries, other equipment for the constituency. Most legislators around the world angle for such projects such that they can appeal to the voters in their constituents since they seek votes just as executives does. In most democracies, it is a process used to obtain funding from a central government to finance projects benefiting legislators' local constituency. It is also known in U.S where it's a legal framework as earmarking of pork barrel. The constituency project shall constitute, if approved, 20% of the annual budget by ensuring that certain portion of the nation's annual budget be set aside for rural development. This idea of constituency project started in 1999 during the tenure of President Ulusha Gwambasunjo, when Nigeria newly returned to civilian rule, people were of the view that such a venture would yield direct impact on the lives of the people, especially those in rural communities, as it will bring governance closer to them. On the other hand, there was another school of thought that kicked against the situation in which members of the National Assembly will directly determine what projects come to their constituency in addition to influencing the would-be contractors. Somehow, an agreement was reached among the parties concerned, and that paved the way for an annual practice whereby the federal government set aside a considerable amount of money for the implementation of the projects. These projects, which are developmental and meant for the grassroots, are often introduced by lawmakers for implementation in their constituencies. Findings reveal that as many as over 8,000 of these projects are scattered across the country, with the intention that, when complete, they will bring economic development and social mobility to Nigerians in every state. According to recent reports, the government has in the past 12 years allocated a minimum of 1 trillion naira for constituency projects. But checking budget breakdowns, some have argued about the constitutionality of constituency projects in the first place. It's important to understand the very foundation of a democratic government. The most important principle is what we call separation of powers. Now, if you look at the Constitution, it begins by providing supremacy of the Constitution. And almost immediately, it divides the powers. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is, this constituency project, where does it fall in the powers that are divested in the three powers. Is it within the legislative power or the executive or the judiciary? 
Now you are not talking of project. If I'm talking of project, you are talking of execution, doing something to achieve the end of government. Definitely, that has nothing to do with making of the law. For example, if we look at the history since 1999, the National Assembly has budgeted almost one trillion naira for constituency projects. Almost one trillion for constituency projects. Now, where is the constituency project anywhere? If we talk to Nigerians, you cannot find any constituency project. The constitutional power to budget, howsoever or whatsoever, belongs to the president. The constitutional power to approve budget or reject it belongs to the National Assembly. All those arguments that the National Assembly is pushing around is just an argument in order to create you know, a support for a, an unconstitutional intrusion into the powers of the president. I think uh, we need to get certain things right. There's no provision for constituency projects, constituency projects in the constitution or in any law. Section 81 of the constitution provides that the president shall prepare the budget, shall cause the budget to be prepared and laid before the National Assembly. The preparation of the budget is a process. Budgeting is a serious process in which the executive will be required to get proposals from each of the departments of the government to verify uh, claims that are being made to fix prices for goods that are going to be supplied, to know the cost of a building or the buildings that are going to be constructed, to find out, you know, by asking for, you know, bill of quantities, if you are going to construct roads and put up buildings and the rest of them. So that is what the Constitution means by saying the president shall cause to be prepared the budget. In the course of debating the budget, the National Assembly cannot prepare the budget. It has been laid before it for the purpose of checking the figures, ensuring that there is no duplication, that there is no fraudulent insertion of any figure. In the course of doing that, the National Assembly can remove what should not be there. But the National Assembly cannot insert into the budget what has not been prepared by the president. Ditto for the so-called constituency project. Because of the lacuna, well, accepted, because of the lacuna in Section 81 of the Constitution, the National Assembly enacted, and to put an end to these controversies, the National Assembly enacted the Fiscal Responsibility Act in 2007. The provisions of that act are to the effect that there will be a medium-term framework which should be prepared by the Minister of Finance. And the National Assembly is one of the institutions to be consulted in preparing the framework. It is that framework that will form the basis of the budget that will be presented to the National Assembly by the President. Therefore, it is at the stage of preparing the framework that input can be sought from the National Assembly. It is at that stage the members can try to convince the executive to fix a road in certain constituencies in the country, or to ensure that the community is supplied with a, a hospital or, a, or, or water or electricity. 
If you can convince the executive, so be it. It becomes part of the appropriation bill to be presented to the National Assembly. But with profound respect, the legislators cannot, at the stage of considering the budget, begin to insert the so-called constituency project. It's just like saying, for instance, that the Ministry of Works as an agency of government is illegal. Because the Ministry of Work is not established by law. Have you ever heard this? All ministries of governments are not established by law. But these are ministries that to whom funds are allocated to. That is one. Two, the issue of constituency projects are issues that are incidental to the exercise of powers of appropriation of the legislator. If you say the legislator has power to appropriate funds for developmental projects in the country, and the legislator not introduce, for example, a 20-kilometer road, federal road in his constituency that has been abandoned or that has not been done, and the people in that constituency requires that road, and then the legislator now introduces it into the national budget, and then of course, make provision for it. What, what is illegal in that? It is in the exercise of its legislative powers of appropriation. The Nigerian public populace today is not interested in how many motions and bills a legislator sponsors in the House of Assembly or in the National Assembly. Those ones does not make direct impact to their life and their immediate environment. And as a lawmaker, you cannot sit down in the House of Representatives or in the National Senate, for that matter, and allocate resources for appointees of the president to develop their states, to develop their own communities, while you keep your hand akimbo without making suggestions as to how your community, your constituency, will benefit from those developmental projects. So the concept of constituency project is born out of the need for the legislators themselves to facilitate, to attract development projects to the constituencies they represent. Others argue that the results do not match the huge sums of money released for project execution and is therefore an avenue for corruption. What of the so-called constituency projects? which is a veritable source of corruption. These constituency projects are spread over the budget for members of the National Assembly, for which they are the initiator and the contractor directly or by proxy. And money will be fully drawn with the project only partially executed or not executed at all. I cannot deny that there can be abuses. I cannot deny that some legislators may want to be part of the execution process. But I also do know that as a legislator, you cannot introduce a project and then go to sleep without monitoring its exercise. It is the degree of your involvement that calls for concern. There are cases where lawmakers may go out of their way to want to personally execute it. That, those are conflict of interest. Those are areas that require, that, that, that of course offends the law. And nobody has said that when anybody offends the law, whether you are the lawmaker that introduced the project or not, the law should not take its course. One cannot defend that. One cannot justify that. But the truth of the matter is that the legislator himself or herself does not have the power to execute those projects. He has the power to facilitate, he has the power to initiate. There are procurement laws guiding the process of procuring uh, projects, goods and services, as required by the Pro by Public Procurement Act of 2007. So we have such cases that you have said happens, and there are abuses and breaches of law. The law should take its course. That is the truth of the matter. The constituent see, allowance is the back rock of corruption in the house.
because when they appropriate it and the money is appropriated when it is to be executed by then they now come in they choose the contractors and most of the projects are not done and that's just what Obasanjo is saying where goes the money no member of the National Assembly, be it Senator or member of the House of Rep, executes this project. It is bidded and then it is the MDAs that will give out these uh, particular projects and later uh, award contracts. Our own is to supervise. I want to make a clarification here. I know that right now there are a lot of states that have been having issues with payment of salary. And if you go to the local governments, we also have issues. Some of them cannot pay salaries. So they, you don't expect any development. It is these constituency projects that we attract from the federal government that we give people opportunity to do these projects in our various constituencies. So if people are saying that this constituency project should not be executed, uh, you are not just anti-National Assembly. I think it's an anti-people uh, uh, statement. We, people should allow us to do it. There have also been concerns about abandonment of constituency projects, which leads to wastage of scarce resources. A 2017 survey by the Chartered Institute of Project Management of Nigeria revealed there are about 56,000 abandoned projects across the country. These projects are worth over 12 trillion naira. Projects in general suffer from, or have suffered in the past, from the budget cycle. Uh, the funding of the federal budget. I think last year was the first time that we had a 100% release on the federal budget. So clearly we have been having uh, 60%, 50%, whatever it is, percentage release on the federal budget. And of course, if there's no funding, the projects have to stop. Uh, they will be abandoned. And when you come back the next year, you probably don't even roll over that project. You come with new projects. So there's been an issue of budgeting. And that, to my mind, is what has been largely responsible for the, um, for the abandoning projects. I mean, there are other uh, issues, but I think the key issue is budgeting. Some of the reasons why some constituency projects could be abandoned, one, is the ambition of the honorable member and the desire to satisfy his people. For instance, like I said, when we had 30 billion dollars in our budget, and then you found out that, uh, uh, let's say the road, the major road in your area is bad. It's okay, I want to tie it. If that road costs one or twenty billion, or you have thirty billion, you cannot complete it. So at the end of the day, it will be a bad road. But if you are reelected, of course you can continue to put money on it until you finish it. But sometimes the honourable member may not be elected, and the new honourable member coming may not be interested in that project. Because we say, ah, that if I finish it, I will not take glory for it, and so project is left. Sometimes you put all your money in the project. And you say, okay, this project will cost 28 million. You put, your body, you put your body in it. And then at the end of the day, federal government releases only 17 million, you know, a lower percentage of the amount. This is probably due to uh, financial, uh, maybe the financial squeeze, price of oil have gone down. So the money federal government was expecting, they did realize it. And then, of course, they give you a lower amount. And then the money cannot finish the project. But you'll be hoping that when another circle, another year comes, you will do it. But if there are election years, if election year is the next year, and the person loses the election. Most Nigerians don't even know that the constituency project is a legal thing as I tried in our constitution. Section 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 20 that gives equal developmental project to geopolitical zone of the country. Most people always assume constituency project is a conduit pipe to embezzle. It is not true because it has no any legal backing. Like the Honorable said, if Senator Buhari Abdel Fattah, 2003 to 2007, start a, a, a constituency project. After it's no more there, you can easily go to the data bank, punch his name, punch constituency project. What he has been able to do, will just show. And if he has not finished it, 
since the constituency project belongs to that community, whoever is taking over from him must see to the completion of that project so that that community will benefit, we won't have all abandoned projects scattered everywhere in, the, in this country. Constituency projects are here to stay. Legislators insist that it's a way to provide dividends of democracy to the people they represent. It's therefore important that concerted efforts are made to streamline the process of nominating and executing constituency projects to reduce wastage of resources and curb corruption. Well, this is the much we can take on today's episode of the program. We hope that you have been enlightened about constituency projects and its processes. Remember, one cannot truly manage what one hasn't measured. It is on this premise that we urge you to play your part. Don't just sit down and complain. Get involved and ask questions, for it is the only way to ensure that public funds truly work for the good of the people. Till I come your way again, I'm Charles Emuze. Thank you for watching.